All right, welcome back to Paleo Radio on 89.7 WOCR. We're at the top of the second hour, and as promised, we have on the line Thomas Stork. Mr. Stork has uh, written widely on Catholic social teaching and other Catholic theological and philosophical topics since the early 1980s, and he's the author of three books. He's the author of The Catholic Milieu, Foundations of a Catholic Political Order, and is on the editorial board of the Chesterton Review, which we actually spoke about last Friday. He was uh, formerly a contributing editor to Chela Matera and New Oxford Review. So oh, no further ado, I would like to introduce Thomas Stork to the program. Thomas Stork, you are on WOCR. Uh, thank you, Jeremiah. Yeah, uh, so so anyways, I, I, I first found out about you through the Distributist Review. And it had to do with a debate coming up, and the debate is involving you and Michael Novak, and I'm at a loss here for the, the third individual. He's uh, Professor Charles Clark. He's a professor of economics at uh, St. John's University on Jamaica, Long Island. Okay, and he's going to be representing uh, socialism, correct? Yes. Now, now is, he, is he actually a socialist, or is he... Just representing it for distinction's sake. Well, he he is a socialist in some sense. Socialism, as as uh, Pius XI explained, well, Pius XI, even as far back as 1931, has split into a number of different movements. One of the, the the most extreme of which, of course, was communism, which at that time was ruling the Soviet Union. But there were many forms of modernism, some of which, according to Pope Pius. Uh, we're, we're asking for things which were perfectly just in, in terms of uh, Christian morality. Uh, the problems with socialism are really quite complex, which we can talk about perhaps tonight. But uh, I don't know in what sense exactly Dr. Clark is a socialist, but obviously in some sense he identifies as one. Yeah, so I went to the Chester Bellic Mandate, which is just a, a fantastic site. Uh, distributist.blogspot.com and saw that you had a number of writings there and actually one of those if I remember correctly uh, was entitled uh, uh, Beyond Individualism and Collectivism or, or, or something along those lines Yeah, uh, I've written I've written those on, on those themes in a number of different uh, articles and different periodicals and basically for someone who would be completely new to this topic, the, the Catholic Church, and and especially since the encyclical of Pope Leo in 1891, Raymond of Arum, has has sketched out a, an approach to society, an approach to economics, which avoids both the collectivism that we associate with communists, for example, in which everything becomes a matter of state control, state ownership, and then and the individualism, the that we associate with capitalism, and this this Catholic approach is not something new, not something that Pope Leo invented. It actually goes back, if you will, to the Old Testament and even and, and to the earliest earliest times of, of the Church. But it was um, it's been reapplied to the modern situation in a remarkable series of papal writings, beginning with Raymond of Arum and Pope uh, Pius XI, who ruled in the in, in the uh, 20s and 30s, he wrote a, quite a number of social encyclicals. Uh, Pius XII, John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul II, they've all written on this subject. Yeah, I, I remember uh, prior to my becoming a Catholic, I, I've been a Catholic for a couple years now, and prior to that, you, you could pretty much place me somewhere in between Lou Rockwell's camp and Pat Buchanan. I couldn't identify exactly w- with either but but I remember when I first stumbled upon this rerum novarum that you're talking about this and this uh, encyclical this letter to the universal church and, and to all the nations really about uh, the conditions of labor and I, I remember the first time I stumbled upon it and it was in this book seven great papal encyclicals and and I read it and it just absolutely blew my mind the the level of justice which which brings us to this it, it, it's uh, it, it's earliest defenders. Okay, after Rerum Novarum. Its earliest defenders were known as distributists. Now, uh, what exactly 
is it that distributism and these distributists, and even up to this day, what is it that they're looking for? What, what is it that they want to see? Well, distributism, which was uh, began as a movement in England in uh, oh, roughly around 1910, uh, before and after that, uh, distributism is taking a is based basically on a passage on a teaching in, in the encyclical that you're talking about, Realm of the Barm, where it says, as many as many men as possible should become owners of their own property. And not just property in the sense of having a house with a mortgage on it, but productive property. If uh, Pope Leo was thinking in terms of farms, workshops, uh, small businesses of one kind or another. And distributism is trying to create a society in which as many individuals can become owners of their own productive property. The the reason for this is is actually is manifold. Under um, under any kind of system like capitalism where you have owners and you have workers and the owners employ the workers to uh, work on the owner's property in one form or another, you always have a tension. You have tension between the owners and the workers. The workers are trying to generally trying to get uh, as much as they can, or at least as much as they as they need, and the owners are trying to give them as little as possible. There's always a cost on their balance sheet which they like to eliminate. That's why we have these problems with shipping jobs overseas, with uh, constant fights over wages, and so on. And distributism is trying to eliminate this this uh, fight over the uh, over over wages by by saying everyone should be as much as possible owner of his own productive enterprise of one form or another. It's also trying to orient society away from simply a preoccupation, a fascination with more and more stuff that has been a characteristic of the modern of the modern world and of capitalism where we're instead of trying to think, well what are what are we here for? What are we on the earth for? We're surely not on the earth to buy just to accumulate property, just to accumulate goods. We're on the earth primarily to serve God, to worship God, to cultivate our family life, to cultivate intellectual life, and ultimately to prepare for heaven. And we don't prepare for heaven very well simply by piling up money, piling up goods. So distributism is trying to address a number of related uh, points by producing an economic system which is more just, more peaceful, allows people to turn their attention to really matter. Yeah, that's something that I'm going through actually right now, um, and I'm not changing the subject, just kind of giving a context. I'm going through right now, I, I printed out a whole bunch of the encyclicals over there from papalencyclicals.net, and uh, specifically the social ones, and talking, going through and looking for the proper role of the state in Catholic social teaching. And um, it's interesting to see as I'm going through there how the, the purpose isn't, uh, when talking about economics, as I'm skimming through and, and seeing other things beyond what I'm looking for, I'm seeing that really um, th- that the distributors are echoing perfectly what the, the popes have said in, in saying that, you know what, listen, this isn't just about money. And it's not just about the power of the state or the will of the people. This is about trying to uh, trying to enable man to live out his life in God's created order to the best of his ability with the gifts that he's got. Yeah, and this is, and when you bring up the state, that's interesting. This is another reason for distributors that in in the modern world, you generally have two systems. You have a system in which most of the would be communism, where the state breaks everything and does everything. And then you have somewhat more mitigated forms where the state has a lot of power, it directly regulates the economy, and so on. And then you have people say, no, that's, that's bad, that produces inefficiencies, it produces kind of a heavy-handed bureaucracy. Let's just, let's just allow people to do whatever they want, pretty much, and have minimal regulation. That causes tremendous problems. We're seeing some of the results of that right now in the uh, financial debacle in the United States and the rest of the world that was caused, in part at least, by uh, lax regulation. Well, the especially Pope pa- well. Pope Leo, actually, in Rail Environment, Pope Pius XI elaborated this more extensively in, in a 1931 letter, encyclical letter of his called Quadigismo Anno, which oh, was a course. commemoration of the 40th anniversary of Rail Environment. He said, no, regulation doesn't have to be done by the central state, but it shouldn't be left simply to the market forces either. It can be done by intermediate groups. And 
one of the points of distributism is the establishment of these intermediate groups 